Hi everyone, it's Miss Graham, and today Mr. Toda and I are going to talk a little bit about the biomolecules. So as you can see on your screen there, I would screenshot your key terms for this lesson, which are monomer, polymer, sponge, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. So last week you learned a little bit about sponge, um, which is a way to remember the essential six elements that all living things need. And remember each of those letters in sponge stands for one of the six essential elements. So our S is sulfur, our P is phosphorus, our O is oxygen, N nitrogen, C carbon, H is hydrogen. And as we talked about last week, these elements combined with one another to make molecules. And when a molecule is really important to something that is alive, we give it the term biomolecule. So talking about the those really important elements, the sponge that make up all living things, how do those come together from really small elements and atoms to build those big molecules? And in biology, we have four macromolecules or big molecules that are essential to all living things. And those are lipids, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, and proteins. So these are the four big ones. You can see pictures of them here that make up all living things and are crucial to everyday functions. If you think back to the characteristics of life, things like maintaining homeostasis, doing metabolism, these macromolecules really play into that and allow all those characteristics of life to happen. Okay. And we, we see these big macromolecules and, and they're big words, but how do we actually think about them in our everyday lives? Well, maybe you've seen this here, the food pyramid, right? All the different types of foods that we eat uh, on a given day. And those macromolecules come from these foods and certain ones might be higher in certain macromolecules than others, right? So if we look at like our breads and starches loaded with carbohydrates, because they're made up of mostly sugars, which is what carbohydrates are. Same with our fruits and vegetables. If we think about lipids, fats, right? These oils at the top, oil, butter, uh, avocados, coconuts have lots of fat, lots of lipids that help our bodies do things, retain energy and whatnot. Uh, and then our other uh, macromolecules like proteins and nucleic acids come from inside the cells of all the things we eat, whether it's uh, things like fish or nuts that are high in protein, or the nucleic acids that we break down from the cells of all these foods that we eat. And I'm sure you guys have seen something like this, a nutrition facts label, right? On the back of any type of food we're gonna get. Uh, it could look like a lot of numbers and really confusing, but if, if we get into it, which we'll do this in class as well, we'll look at these macromolecules and how they play out in our foods and how much we get, right? So if you see right away, carbohydrates, right? Uh, proteins, different amounts and different foods that we eat. So we see these macromolecules on, on nutrition labels, and we're gonna look closer at how these macromolecules come from the foods we eat and help us at the cellular level uh, to accomplish all the characteristics of life. One important thing to understand about our biomolecules are two terms, what we call monomers and polymer. So if we look at the beginning of the word monomer, we see the word mono, and mono means one. If we look at the beginning of polymers, we see the word poly, which means many. So our biomolecules, or as Mr. Toda called them, our macromolecules are big molecules. They're what we call polymers, and they're made up of many small units. Here's a good analogy. Think of a Lego, one Lego, as being a monomer. It is one unit of something. Well, those monomers bond together to form polymers or large units. Okay, so right here I'm making a polymer. It is many monomers bonded or connected together. So a monomer is one unit of something. Think about it as one Lego, where a polymer is many monomers bonded together. Think of it as a Lego creation, a Lego castle. So we have a monomer and a polymer. One versus many. And all of our biomolecules are made out of specific monomers that we're going to talk about that bond together to form that really large biomolecule or macromolecule. Uh, all right. So the first macromolecule or biomolecule we'll talk about is carbohydrates. Okay. The monomers are called monosaccharides, which is one simple sugar we often call these. Okay. And these 
monosaccharides or these sugars or carbohydrates, uh, they come in little tiny pieces, usually in chains or rings, and they're made up of carbon, right, from that sponge we talked about, those really important elements. And carbohydrates are really good for fast energy. It's quick energy that gets, when you eat something that's really sugary, if maybe you've had that sugar rush before after a couple Jolly Ranchers, uh, you get really, really excited that that quick sugar, that quick energy is in your blood, gets absorbed to your cells, they use it, and then you come down afterwards in that sugar crash where you take a nice nap. Um, and in terms of cells, whether it's plants or animals, we actually use carbohydrates uh, for structural purposes too. They help give us structure. If you've ever taken a nice bite of a lovely green vegetable like celery, it's super crunchy. That crunch comes from those carbohydrates giving it structure. All right, and then we have these complex carbohydrates, right, or polysaccharides. So again, that whole monomer versus polymer concept, we take simple sugars and we connect them, stack them together and make a complex sugar. And some of these examples are glycogen, starch, and cellulose, okay? And again, that celery that we talked about, that's cellulose, that's sugars that are stacked together to make cell walls of plants. Really, really tough structure. And uh, you can see here some pasta, who doesn't love pasta? Some ravioli, some spaghetti, right? Loaded up with carbohydrates, quick sugar. Uh, that's why if you ever heard of maybe runners or bicyclists after or right before a big event, the day before, they eat a lot of pasta, right? Get a lot of sugar in their cells and their bloodstream to have quick energy to use. And some of our examples, right? Pasta, bread, and then anything that ends in ose, right? Glucose, cellulose, fructose, sucrose, lactose. Those are all sugars if they end in ose. Um, same thing with fiber, right? We talked about that cellulose of cell walls of plants. Uh, that gives us fiber like in a fiber one bar or foods that have a lot of fiber are loaded up with cellulose. All right, our next biomolecule or macromolecule that we're going to talk about this morning is called lipids. And lipids is the fancy science word for saying fats. You know, as scientists, we can't be simple. We needed to give it a new word. We couldn't just say fat. So in the science world, when you hear lipid, think fat. And just like our carbohydrates we just heard about, just like our carbohydrates had a monomer, so does lipids. And lipids have two monomers, what we call glycerol and fatty acids. And those combine together to make a polymer of a lipid or a fat. And while we need lipids and fats in our diets in small amounts, they do provide some really important functions, not only um, in our cells, but in our energy storage as well. So throughout the course of the year, you'll hear more about our lipids. So an important place we find our lipids in our cells is on our cell membrane, that outer covering around the cell. And we'll talk all about that in a few weeks. Um, waterproof layering, for example, on bird wings. If you've ever looked at a bird wing when it's raining outside, those feathers don't get sopped. There's a, there's a waterproof lay, layering on there that allows the bird wings to still work even when it's really rainy outside. Um, something that lives in a really cold environment like a polar bear, it's got a lot of fat or blubber around its outside in order to kind of insulate it and keep that heat in. And then lastly, lipids are really important in storing energy in our body. So as Mr. Toda just said, our carbs are our quick energy. Our lipids are our energy storage in our bodies. And if you've ever looked at a nutrition label, you might see that lipids are breaking broken down into two types, what we call saturated and unsaturated or trans fats. We won't get too complicated. It has a lot to do with chemistry, but in a saturated lipid, it means there's all single bonds between the molecules inside of that lipid. So if you've ever looked at a nutrition label, you might see that our fats or our lipids are broken down into two types, what are called our saturated fats and our unsaturated or trans fats. We're not going to get too much into the chemistry behind it, but a saturated fat has to do with the fact that all of the carbon hydrogen bonds are single bonds. And if you've ever um, learned a little bit about saturated fats, they are the ones we're supposed to avoid. They're not very good for our bodies. Unsaturated fat has some double bonds between those carbon and hydrogen molecules. Um, our unsaturated fats are the ones that are liquid at room temperature, things like olive oil and vegetable oil. And those are 
what we call healthier for ourselves and our body. Here's a whole bunch of examples. So some foods we eat, things like butters and different types of oils. Um, waxes is a good example of a lipid. I know we don't eat waxes, but something like chapstick is made out of wax. So when you put that chapstick on your lips, it forms a protective barrier to keep your lips from drying out. It really keeps in that moisture. And then some different compounds we have inside our body that you've probably heard, heard of. Things like hormones and steroids are examples of lipids. All right, so our last biomolecule we're going to talk about in this lesson is nucleic acids. And they're made up of little things called nucleotides, not nucleotide pods, don't eat them, right? But nucleotides that come together and make up these nucleic acids. And their functions are really crucial to life, right? They're store, it's how we store genetic information. It's how we transfer genetic information, so pass it along. And they do help with energy storage and transfer. So if you know anything about genetics or how we pass our information down, you know it has to do with this molecule right here, DNA, right? Uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. And you can see in here, you can see some of these different color elements, right, from the sponge that make it up. And this is what one nucleic acid looks like. And they go across the DNA molecule, which we're going to talk a lot about later in the year. We think of it as that spiral staircase, like a ladder that's twisted. And these nucleic acids make up the steps on that ladder. And a few specific examples of nucleic acids would be these molecules, DNA, RNA, and ATP. So we know that DNA and RNA have to do with storing information, passing information along, and really allowing our cells to do the processes they need to do. And we're going to talk all about it, how they make proteins, how to turn them on, turn them off, how to replicate, lots of great stuff that go with these uh, big macromolecules or rather the DNA and RNA that are made up by nucleic acids and macromolecules. And then ATP, the energy molecule of life, adenosine triphosphate, okay, uh, has nucleic acid in it, and it's how we do all of our cellular energy. Again, we'll talk a lot about these later in the year, but it's key to remember, just like so many other things, it's based on the biomolecules, these big macromolecules that are the basis of all life. And on that, that's the end of this video. Stay tuned for next week where we're going to talk about the last one, proteins. Proteins! And be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.